Modern life tends to mute the resonance between people and their own bodies, their surroundings, their consciousness, their souls. Yoga is a revolutionary method by which one can retune, recalibrate, reform, and ultimately return to a vibrant and harmonious state. Yoga teachers are facilitators, channels, and mediums for yogic insight. So in any given posture, my goal is to help the student find the center of themselves. Um, and from that center, you create a circumference and you develop a radius from center to circumference. And this becomes a skill that you develop, an actual an imagery that you develop, and you're able to superimpose over your entire practice. So by finding a center point, you find a vertical axis. And by finding a vertical axis, you can arrange everything The most important aspect of the training is developing your eye for detail. A posture is only as effective as it is relevant to the individual. I make sure that all my students really learn to look before they approach someone, before they adjust someone in a posture. The body is designed to fit together and there are certain proportions which can be measured from right to left, from top to bottom. For example, if you stretch the front of the body to the length of the thigh bone and put a knee inside of the armpit on both sides, you're extending your spine to the same length on both sides. When you have a basic sense of this design and you approach all your postures with this in mind, you are looking for a good fit in any given posture. You wouldn't settle for a compromise. Yoga means to join, to unite, to link, to bond things together. Art is actually the practice of putting things together. The word vinyasa means to put together in a special way. There's a reason why one practices postures on both sides of the body, why one opens the front of the body, the back of the body, the top and the bottom. There's a reason why you create both flexibility and ease and fluidity as well as stability and groundedness. People tend to use one hemisphere of their mind over the other, one hand over the other, ear over the other, one eye over the other. you start to actually use your mind in a different way. You see things differently. You hear things differently. You consider yourself differently. And interestingly, people consider you differently. I believe that everyone is reacting to one another's posture. And you learn to read by reading yourself, by examining yourself. Once you see these relationships between yourself and your own posture, you see it in other people. And I believe this develops empathy and compassion. Functionally speaking, to develop symmetry in the body is to address imbalances that perhaps you were born with or that were created over time through experience. If you were injured, let's say in a leg or an arm, you would walk differently, you would handle things differently, you may or may not actually gain the use that you originally had. So there's a reformative aspect to the practice where you, you confront these experiences. Our body's language is the transcription of our consciousness. So our particular posture is an articulation of our own personal narrative. Yoga offers an archetypal framework, a formal method based on universal ideals. Yoga postures are universal forms which we as practitioners attempt to join, unite, and bind our personal form with. The role of a teacher is to leave people in a better position with regard to themselves and their surroundings, to guide, tune, adjust them so they are more stable, well-adjusted, inspired, and insightful. When a musician has mastery over their instrument, it's a joy to play. The mastery, however, is attained through effort, precision, skill, grace, 
and inspired and intelligent practice. Yoga is an art, a science, a discipline, a path to self-knowledge, a means by which one can reform and ultimately transform themselves. How one fits their body together with their mind, this is what it means to be well-adjusted. 